So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at logical equivalents and De Morgan's laws. Um, the De Morgan's laws are going to be a very powerful uh, form of logical equivalence. Okay, and we want to get that this notion of logical equivalence means that we can actually set up propositions that are essentially equated to one another. Okay. And this ends up becoming very powerful when we do logical proofs. It also becomes the foundation for proof, okay? So that is, is that we can change things or shape things utilizing sets of logical rules that we go through and we um, prove our logical equivalent via a variety of methods. What we're gonna do in this particular uh, video is we're gonna show that two compound propositions are logically equivalent, right? If they have the same truth value for every combination of their atomic propositions, and we're going to do that utilizing truth tables, okay? So we're going to do that using truth tables. So I think that it's probably going to make a lot more sense if we go through it and do some examples. So let's take a look at two basic uh, propositions that we know, in fact, are going to end up being logically equivalent. So we have, on the one hand, we're going to have the conditional, P implies Q, and we'll have the contrapositive of that, which is not Q implies not P, okay? Not Q implies not P. In order to show that these two are actually logically equivalent, what I'll need to do is I'm going to set up a truth table with my atomic propositions of P and Q. We've done this before in my previous lecture, so if you need some refreshers on how to do this, make sure you go take a look there. We're going, we have P, we have Q. We'll have not P and not Q. Then we'll have P implies Q. And right next to that, we're going to put the contrapositive because that's going to allow us to show, you know, pretty clearly that what we have is logical equivalence. So this is true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, then false, false, true, true, and false, true, false, true. For P and Pi's Q, we just want to remember true, 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 right? Okay, it gives me true. True false is gonna be false. False true will be true. And false false is going to be true. So there we go. Now we go not Q implies not P. Well, if we go in here, not Q is now my hypothesis. So I've got false implies false, that's true. True implies false, oh, that's false. Great, because remember our hypothesis is not Q. Then um, false implies true, that is in fact true. And then true implies true, that's going to be true. So now let's take a look at these truth tables to see the logical equivalence. If I start out here for the conditional, we've got true, false, true, true, based upon those values for true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And then right next to it, you can see that not Q implies not P has an identical set of truth values for each one of our P's and Q's, okay? So since they have the same truth values for all P and Q, what we say is that P implies Q is, and we're gonna write three, uh, three straight lines, like an equal sign with an extra, extra line. P implies Q is equivalent to not Q implies not P. And that's our first step in logical equivalence. Now let's look at the De Morgan's laws. So the De Morgan's laws are actually a group of logical properties and logical laws that don't just sit inside of logic, but they're also going to be shown inside of um, set theory and inside of a lot of different areas inside of uh, you know mathematical logic and just logic in general. What they do is they allow us to negate compound propositions. So like let's say for example we have we have conjunction. And so remember that conjunction is our and statement, okay? And so we've got P and Q. And what we're going to do is we're gonna ask ourselves, well, we've got not P and Q, right? And we're gonna prove, utilizing a truth table, that that's gonna end up being equivalent to not P or not Q. And so essentially what we say when we do the De Morgan's Laws is we say that whenever we negate a compound proposition, we're going to negate each individual a statement and then flip the sign. We're gonna change it to or, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna demonstrate that these two are in fact equivalent, okay? I've got P, I've got Q, I've got not P, not Q. 
I've got P and Q, okay? I've got then not P and Q, and then I have not P or not Q. Once again, true, true, false, false for P, true, false, true, false for Q. Our not P is gonna negate P, so false, false, true, true, and then we'll negate Q, so false, true, false, true. Now we'll use our truth table for conjunction. So P and Q, remember that we have to have both P and Q be true. So this is gonna make that true. And then true, false, 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 true is false, and false, false is false. Again, just utilizing P and Q. Then we're gonna go in and negate P and Q. So if you remember when we were doing truth tables looking at compound propositions, We've got to actually only focus on the P and Q and we're going to negate that, negate the, the entire compound proposition. So this is now going to be false, true, true, true. And now we're going to go to not P or not Q. So not P or not Q is only going to be true when not P, okay, and not Q are both false. So the only time we see that is actually this first line. So that's going to be false, then true, true, and true. And so there we go. Now if you look, you can see that not P and Q is, has the same, same exact truth values as not P or not Q. So what we have done here is we have proven, has been proven, excuse me, this has been proven, right, using our truth table. We have a second powerful De, Morgan, De Morgan's Law, and our second powerful De Morgan's Law is going to be this one. It's gonna be, we're gonna negate our disjunction. So we've got disjunction now, so our or statement, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use De Morgan's Laws to negate that. So we've got not P or not Q, not P or Q, and we wanna show that that's logically equivalent to not P and not Q. So we'll draw our truth table. It's gonna look very similar to the other one. We got P, Q, not P, not Q, not, uh, excuse me, P or Q, not P or Q, and not P and not Q. So again, notice that what we've done here is we brought the negation in and we've switched the sign, the sign switches. That's gonna be a big key component of doing any kind of De Morgan's Laws. True, false. False, true, true. Then not Q is going to be false, true, false, true. So true, true gives me true. True, false gives me true. False, true gives me true. And false, false gives me false. Not P or Q thus is going to be false, 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 true. When I go in and I look at the conjunction for not P and not Q, what I get now is false, 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 true. Because anytime we have either not P or not Q, false, we get the whole statement is false. And so consequently, this uh, truth table demonstrates that those two statements are logically equivalent because over here on this side, what we have is we actually have um, identical truth tables for not P or Q and not P and not Q. And there you go. So what we looked at was we looked at three examples of logical equivalents, and we looked at two that were actually really, really important, although the third actually was also important too. Um, we looked at the conditional being logically equivalent to not P, uh, not P implies not Q or the, uh, the contraposition. We've also looked at um, the two sets of De Morgan's laws for basic logic. And so they end up becoming really, really important for us as we um, continue to work through logic. We're going to see another example of how to go out and show logical equivalents, and um, what we're going to use next is the laws of logic. Every one of our laws of logic can be proven utilizing the logical equivalents that we've done here. Okay, so it's important to know that this is actually how we show logical equivalents if we cannot use the laws of logic. Sometimes the laws of logic end up making things a lot faster, especially when we have really large statements, okay, um, where truth tables will just end up being unwieldy. But what you want to get is at the 
basest level, at the bottom level, what we can do with every set of logically equivalent statements is we can construct a truth table, okay? And we can utilize that truth table in order to show that the statements are in fact logically equivalent. So this ends the lecture.